garden gals and guys, it's Steph with Chinese Garden and today I am going to get some of my snapdragons into the ground. I have a couple succession plantings of them which means I've spaced when I'm starting my seedlings about three weeks apart, two to three weeks apart so that I have blooms coming up throughout the season. Let me set the scene for you here. Today is Tuesday, April, oh, it's not Tuesday, hold on. Oh my gosh, I'm so off. Today is Friday, April 15th, and I am all over the place because we leave for vacation tomorrow for a week. Yeah, I'm leaving all of my seedlings, over a thousand, for a week. The anxiety is real, but I have faith that my next door neighbor, Danny, who's a high school student, he's going to take care of watering for me and opening up the greenhouse if it needs it, things like that. So, fingers crossed, I'm paying Danny well, he takes care of my little babies. I did manage to get a lot of my cold hardy annuals into their beds, which is super exciting. So let me take you over to show you those right now. So here are the Iceland poppies, which you've seen in a video, but I did also get my stock planted, which I also showed on a video. These are the ones I don't think you've seen. The bachelor buttons, I did discuss that I need to get those in the ground because those are one of the most cold hardy. And then back here we have Bells of Ireland and some more Bells of Ireland in this bed. We've had gutsy, gutsy wind but everything's looking really good in here. I'm super happy and proud. Really beautiful green coloring. Looks like they've transplanted well. And a lot of these Iceland poppies have gotten even greener and a little less yellow, which is great. So, so far things are looking really good. Stock's doing great as well. So we just need to keep up with everything and if things go according to plan as they are so far, I think we're going to be feeling really good. This bed up front over here is my goal to get planted today with snapdragons. Now if I weren't leaving for a week, I would leave these snapdragons in their trays for probably another 10 days. April 25th is when I was shooting to plant them out to just give them a little more protection from some cold weather. But I've looked at the forecast. We're not supposed to get below 30 and these should be able to handle 30 degrees because they're cool flowers and cold hardy. So I'm going to risk it because we're in the greenhouse here. We're supposed to get I think a couple days into the 60s next week when I'm gone. And if this greenhouse doesn't get open for whatever reason, you know, if Danny forgets or he's at school during the day, it can get up to 90 in here. And that's too hot for a lot of these plants, which are cool flowers to grow well in. So I would rather risk putting them out in the bed and just having them fight the cold a little bit which I think they can handle and we'll do okay with, rather than getting too hot and potentially too dry and it be a real struggle. So that's my train of thought here. So here is my queen tray, what I'm dabbing my queen tray because they're all so gorgeous. They look really lovely. These I planted on February 11th. These are the ones I think I'm going to try and get in the ground. These are the ones I've showed that are recovering a little bit. I think I overwatered them. It was this tray and this tray, but look how much better this tray looks. It's really come a long way. They have recovered really well just by making sure that they are getting plenty of sunlight, that they're getting some airflow and appropriate watering along with this tray over here looks good too. And I did say that I transplanted a couple from this tray out because this tray looked the worst. You can see those empty holes. And those are all right here. And look, looking really, really healthy. So potting up is a good move there. So that experiment has taught me a lot. When in doubt, if something's looking not so good, 
pot it up and they will bounce right back. Cause all of these, see that nice green color and they're nice shape and pretty decent size looked something like these smaller leaves turned downward kind of orangish so that's a big difference yeah so take that and put that in your back pocket to pot up if you need to with a seedling that's not looking so good so my plan is going to be to put this tray in that's looking really healthy and I think I'm actually not going to pinch these, which I know. I know, I know, I probably should, but I wanna get blooms a little sooner and these look so good. I'm not worried as much about the branching that the pinching will do right now. I think I'll pinch some of these other trays instead. So I'm gonna get these in the ground, which is Costa Apricot, day and night snapdragon and rembrandt snapdragon so that'll look really pretty in the box and then also this guy back here the apple blossom which is a gorgeous pastel pink and white color so i think all those colors will look really nice in the box so whew, let's do this i've got an hour and then i've got to go run around for our trip so here we go here we go First, I'm going to come in with this Espoma Land and Sea compost. I'm going to put two bags as my very top layer of compost on top of the bulk order that I got. And this is just a really nutrient dense, made with lobster and crab meal, good quality compost that I think will really enrich my plant's growth and prosperity, if you will. So this is going in and then I'm going to do a broadcast spread of biotone starter fertilizer and then I'm going to get my snaps in the ground and I'm simply just going to use a butter knife to get those out of the tray. Now I'm just going to come in with the fertilizer as I said and there is instructions on the back there are instructions on the back, I should say, but I'm just dying it. And then I'll rub it in. How are we doing on time? 158. I need to leave at 240. That's 40 minutes. Here we go. Okay, a couple things on planting these snapdragons. As I said, I'm gonna use a butter knife just to help me get them out of their cells. And then spacing wise in this bed, I'm going to do a pattern of nine inches apart. So it'll be kind of a zigzag pattern similar to what I did with the stock over there. So I believe we'll have seven rows, seven or five, somewhere in there. Also sun requirements wise, these will take part shade, I believe. Last year mine were in a little bit of shade and did okay, but they can also handle full sun. So they should be perfect in this spot right here. And that is everything. Again, you usually do pinch them coming in above maybe the second true leaf point and snapping off. I actually have a pinching snapdragons video from last year, uh, but I did half of mine pinch last year and half not, and I honestly didn't notice that big of a difference between the two. So that's why I'm not gonna worry so much about this first round because I want those blooms to come a little bit sooner and pinching will delay that a little bit. But that being said, in general, they say when you pinch your snapdragon plants, they create more branches and thus more blooms. So again, it's early in my experience. I've only been doing this a little while. So I would try both and see what works best for you. In the meantime, let's get these in the ground. Beautiful, nice healthy roots. If it's root bound at all, I'm just going to wiggle them loose a little bit here. 
as I like to say, so they can spread their wings and fly. And don't forget to put your label down in the hole so you remember your varieties. First one's in. And I'm just kind of using my butter knife here. I think that's about nine inches as a measuring spot for where my next one's going to go. So I'm going up and down, up and down. I think we'll end up having five back here. I just love a nice, hearty, healthy seedling. Makes you feel so good, so proud. Now this one I'm actually going to take apart because they're two really healthy seedlings. There's been a couple with two in them, one smaller, and I've just planted them together. But these two will be fine being torn apart a little bit and now I've got two really healthy seedlings. Snapdragons are known for being pretty tough if you need to do that to separate them so don't hesitate if you're growing some and you've got two in one cell. My most recent ones that I sowed March 10th I believe I've got to do that too now. There's like three or four in a cell. I'm going to do those tonight and split those up. Okay, they're all in here. My pattern got a little wonky in some places, but overall, I think that is looking pretty good. I've still got this tray of apple blossom and Chantilly bronze and a few extra Costa apricots in here. So I will plant those either tonight or tomorrow morning, hopefully, but let's get these watered in. And actually I'm gonna water all of the flowers in these beds in for the day as well. And so you know, drip line will be coming in here. I have already had it trenched. And these little pipes down here with the duct tape on the top, that's where the water is going to come from. And I'll have about four drip lines or three drip lines per bed. I'm thinking a fourth of an inch wide. So these will have their own zone. It'll be hooked up to a Bluetooth so I can water whenever and wherever I need to. But for today, hand watering it is. One more. are all watered in. How am I on time? 2.45. Okay, I gotta go. I'm supposed to be somewhere at 2.50 and I'm going to get my nails done actually. Don't do that very often. Do you ever feel judged about the amount of dirt that could be under your nails when you go to the nail salon when you're an avid gardener? Hmm, I always wonder what they think and then I don't care anyways. Anyways, snapdragons are in that first box. Gonna try and do this one in the morning. Please let me know how your snapdragons are doing in the comments below and where you're gardening from in the comments. I love to hear. Happy planting everyone. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't yet to follow along here with all things garden. I'd love to have you here. See you in the next one. Bye.